Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of settling for mediocre are over. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to Project Relationship. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. And we talk about relationships week after week. And today we're going to talk about something that comes right alongside relating. For sure. Because right up alongside relating and love is grief and loss and heartbreak. And sadness. And sadness. I don't think that we can have love without these other things. Yeah, I mean, we can't really have life without these other things, so they're definitely going to be part of a relationship. <laughs> right. When when we got up today and we're thinking about what it was that we wanted to talk about, we had a few ideas, and every single one of them sounded more fun to me than talking about heartbreak yeah. and grief. But I'm currently experiencing a heartbreak, and I think... I think that talking about it from this place, from inside mm -hmm. the experience yeah. of of what we call heartbreak feels more tender and raw. And that's how I want to show up for the people who are taking the time to listen is exactly as we are. Um, yeah. The, uh, the idea here is for people to see what we do, what, what, what life is like, what our relationship is like from as much of the inside as we can show. So... Yeah. I'm so, sorry for your heartbreaking, but here's an opportunity to. Yeah. So here's the thing. That's what we set out to do. But I didn't know that that was exactly what mm. we set out to do. I thought we were going to demonstrate by talking about topics. I thought we'd demonstrate some of what we do in our relationship. But in fact, this process of actively working on our relationship sort of live yeah. for 15 to 40 minutes is is its own sort of it's its own part of relating it is so yeah i mean if we thought well we talk about stuff all the time anyway we yeah. can we can put it on a podcast so let's start by defining what we mean when we say heartbreak what does heartbreak mean to you for me uh heartbreak means the um, I've experienced heartbreak from the loss of something that mattered to me. Yeah. And specifically, well, heartbreak for me is, it's the, um, the unexpected loss, the, um, the inexplicable loss. Like, I don't know what happened because when things change because, and you can see how they change, that feels like it's a different, um, there's a different word for that. Yeah. It's definitely sadness, but the heartbreak feels like, what, where did that come from? Right. Okay. That's an interesting point. So we've experienced a bunch of sadness during yes. the course of our relationship. Some of them, some of the sadnesses we've had were, have been deep grief around death. Mm -hmm. So when my brother was dying, there was this deep anticipatory sadness. We knew he was dying and we knew he would no longer be with us. And there was this experience that I had where I, I allowed myself to anticipate what it would be like to no longer have him with us. Mm -hmm. And once we knew that there was nothing else to do, there was a sort of softening in the house it, on his part too. Like, oh, yeah. there's nothing to do. This is, this is the end of whatever's happening now. But I'm hearing you say heartbreak also has this this mixed in sense of like I don't understand mm -hmm. I don't I don't understand what I could have done different I feel misunderstood or and that's yes. exactly what I'm experiencing right now I feel misunderstood and I feel incapable of changing my circumstances right so heartbreak and 
the anticipation of loss. It's it's interesting that this is all very close to the description of jealousy. Because yeah, I jealousy hear it. and I that was not planned at all, but jealousy is a protective emotion that we feel when we anticipate, when we fear the loss of a, a beloved love object. Object being person here. Yes. Um it it has a lot to do with what we imagine might happen to interrupt our love bond. And the heartbreak then can come when that love bond the, is yeah. in fact actually interrupted. It's ruptured. Yep. For and, me, that that sensation is I mean, it is gutting and it washes over me with this tidal wave. And that's how I have felt this week is the tidal wave of, I did not see this coming. I'm swept off my feet. And now I'm left feeling a range of emotions like deep sadness, grief, um, confusion, anger, mm -hmm. um, frustration, misunderstanding on both sides. And what do you find to be helpful, supportive? to um what experiences what what relational you know what what can i do but yeah but so, what do you find to help you in your life when so you're the hardest spot? part about this particular heartbreak is that i didn't see it coming i didn't know that the person was going to withdraw from me and the request was that i don't talk to them and so i can't talk it out i can't find out what i could do differently mm -hmm. there's nothing there's a it's a it's an intense rupture and it feels scary because there's nothing to do. So what you've been doing this week has been really, really helpful because even though I know that the last thing you needed on your plate this week was more caretaking, you have been catching me with this. You've been like catching me with a soft, open attitude over and over again because the heartbreak is like this. It's like standing with your feet in the ocean and then the tide is way more than you anticipated so or at least that's how i'm experiencing it so the tide washes in whew, and i i feel my my heart drop out my stomach sort of drops mm -hmm. out and then and it's momentary it's fast it's fleeting but the experience is that i can't keep my feet i can't stay right. upright in my life and you have been steady and calm and not panicked about the fact that I'm having these feelings. And and I definitely offer you what I would want in that situation. And you, you mentioned that earlier today about how um, we will often provide for other people what we want ourselves. And yeah, in that spot, that's what I would want so too. And it's how I... You're using empathy uh, to, mm -hmm. to feel into what you think would yeah. work because I haven't been able to state exactly what I needed every step of this this particular I, I just I haven't actually even known a lot of tears and you know um, and talking like talking out my yeah. thoughts um and and then most of all reassurance reassurance that even if I did something to cause this that that doesn't that doesn't essentially make me a bad person right. that yes. i just and it's really hard to believe when you're faced with the loss of someone you care about I, or at least this is how i experience it and i experienced this with death too i felt so responsible for john dying even though cancer came and took yeah. him away and we did everything we could uh, i, I yeah. still my, so I guess that, I mean, my childhood trauma certainly formed a core for me of responsibility, of hyper responsibility. Yep. If something has gone wrong, if a rupture has happened, if, a, if, a, if an interruption or a loss has happened, I must have done something to cause it. Also, there's a bit of a God complex in there. <laughs> well, there is. Like every, <laughs> every change, positive and negative, is your responsibility. Right. So there's some power that I can hold there, but yep. also... Um, is it separates me from the reality that we're walking around this world not having anything, nothing's promised. Yeah. No next moment. Yeah. 
No, no person, no anything. And I know that no one owes me an interaction. So that's what I've been using to hold Mm -hmm. me up is no one owes me an interaction. So this person wanting not to talk to me is their boundary and I will respect it. And I can feel as bad as I feel and still respect that boundary. But, but that doesn't stop the grief or, or I think heartbreak is the right word for it. The heartbreak of not even understanding yeah. whether like who do i need to be for this to be different because, how do i change myself for this to be different yeah. that's the impulse i have yeah. if i could just change if i could just figure it out it's really hard yeah that's that is a really hard spot because i don't want to abandon to be myself in. right and so that's alongside the heartbreak so you're you're observing this boundary because that's who you want to be so you're experiencing the heartbreak and alongside that you i I observe you feeling authenticity you're still being you yeah so you're yeah that's 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 what i see um and i try to float along with the 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 momentary experiences that you have those drops and And such yeah, and that has been very helpful. That has been what has gotten me through this. And it's what got me through um, the last big loss that we experienced too, which happened last summer. Mm-hmm. Um, the The sensation that we could, in fact, be sad or be in that state of loss and grief and just and just experience it next to each other. Yeah. The hard part there has been not taking on each other's feelings. Uh, yes, that is hard. I've noticed, I noticed earlier this week, you had some frustration rise up mm-hmm. you're, about this. You're like, ah, I, I could feel it. Yep. I didn't want to take on that frustration because right. um, it wasn't how I was feeling at the time. And so separating, differentiating who we each are. Differentiation is such a fantastic concept yes. for working with all kinds of emotions. I, I work with it around jealousy all the time with people in order to, in order to really own our feelings and understand the complexity of a feeling like, like heartbreak or mm-hmm. jealousy. We need to understand what's ours and what is the other person's. Yeah. And this is interesting because you and I aren't, it's not, this heartbreak isn't between us. No. You're right here for me. I feel safe and loved. And yet I'm still experiencing the heartbreak. So how much of your experience this week has been colored by moments where you forget the differentiation, where you accidentally yeah. a lot, like interesting. find yourself feeling what I'm feeling? Because you are very empathetic. So um the what you were saying about my frustration coming up what i found was that um i could feel when i was interacting with you that that wasn't what you were feeling and so i expressed it a little bit and then realized that that was uh an empathetic mismatch like Mm. that wasn't empathy that was my feeling not not what you were feeling and so it wasn't helpful it didn't it didn't put me in your camp to stand with you where you were which is what you were looking for was somebody to just be with you there and see you so that is what i had that was the act that is what i did differently this time than i have done in earlier times when i experienced this pain i went to you and asked you to just stand with me and that was really clear and helpful and there was We've had enough experiences that I I was a hundred percent confident that that was the thing to do, but if we, but it was hard to imagine that doing what felt like nothing was going to be the right thing to do. It's not nothing, I know, but it feels very passive. And I wanted to actively do things right. to support you, to and I certainly wanted to fix, but there wasn't anything. Right. And so being simply standing in that spot with you is what you wanted. And um, I, I have to say that the, the, the collection of other experiences that you and I have had of, of grief and pain and whatnot has led, led me to the spot where I could do that. Yeah. So the experience of standing next to someone 
having feelings, noticing that you are in fact separate and different from them. And this is maturity. Yeah. This is like the acts of maturing. Because I don't think maturity is not something you achieve. You don't wake up one day and you're like, there, nailed it. All done. (laughs) Yeah. Anytime somebody tells me they're all done or they've done their, they've done their work, they're like, because they're done. I'm like, very, very suspicious. Even a toddler eating dinner. You're not done. (laughs) (laughs) I know you're not done. (laughs) There's no way. There's no way I would have felt as seen if you had tried to explain how I feel. In fact, the only mm. problem we have had this week was one, at one moment yep. you you slipped into a sort of movement of of telling me there there it will be okay. Uh, yeah. And that's not what you said. It was much no, more complicated. But, it was actually a very yeah, kind kind of thing that you were to. saying. Yeah, but it boiled down to I, I, I what I what I then felt like a bit of a rush, like being rushed out mm. of like there, there, come, come on now. You can, you can get back up. I'm not ready to get up off the mat yet. Right. I'm not, I got knocked down emotionally. It doesn't even matter whether this person meant for that to happen. It's still what happened right. for me. And I'm on the mat and I'm not back up. And maybe in fact, just recording this is part of standing back up because because I went out last night with someone and I shared some of this story and they held space for me too. And I noticed that the the grip of the that tidal wave feeling that that's sweeping me off my feet, it had eased nice. a lot. And so uh, that's interesting what you said about rushing and about t- the timing is and I've heard so much when people talk about grief from grief. Um, and I've, I've experienced my own, um, through my life. One of the most common, uh, complaints is people want me to get over this faster. Yeah. Like that, that we try to rush each other through our grief. It is painful to experience someone else's grief. If you've got any empathy at all, it's hard or even compassion. It's hard, but pushing somebody through it so that you can, okay. If I push you through this experience so that I don't have to feel it, I mean, first of all, that just sounds tremendously rude and selfish, but it is, it's one of the, uh, it's one of the worst things you can do. It's one of the most common mistakes people make. Yeah. Hurry up and get over it. No, I just sit back and be here for you until you it resolves for you into whatever comes next whatever's next which isn't necessarily happiness Uh or like i don't know what comes next and part of why is because this person has withdrawn from my life so do i remake my life without them in it do i wait do i like there's the questioning and so this is where heartbreak is a little bit different from grief over death grief over death there is a there is a, a sort of formal understanding somewhere inside that I will have to get up off the mat and go make my life again without this person. There's a level it, of clarity. Which is which I have yeah. not enjoyed. But no. but that exists. So and heartbreak is a little different because you don't really know what the outcome is or what it might be. You experienced grief early in life. You lost your father when you were 17. Did people rush you? Did you feel rushed? It doesn't really matter whether people rush you. Did you feel so, rushed? Um, that's, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, I, I think the the essential answer is yes, because um, at the time, what I felt was a very small handful of surprising people, people that I hardly felt like I had any relationship with those people acknowledged what had happened and everybody else kind of didn't. So it wasn't even a, a, like a sense of rushing pressure as a, just a dismissal of the fact, yeah. which is its own kind of rushing. It's like, let's all pretend that this is all resolved already. Like there wasn't even room for a process, let alone rushing the process. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And so process then, Hmm. everybody's process. And so the flip side of my heartbreak is um, people don't generally just pull out of our lives for no reason. Um, this person has a reason and they're, 
I grant them that like their reason is their reason and that's valid and it's okay. It's, it's hard when we don't really understand each other's processes. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. that is something I've been coming to terms with, with you for years. You work slower. You, you're like you, you're a feeler. Do you feel your way through situations and feeling it just is a slower process. We, we first learned about this when we were both doing, um, analysis with their green he would talk to us about how how your decisions your value decisions came out of your feeling and so you needed to slow down my value decisions come out of extroverted thinking they're very very fast and they're um that does not make them better in any way but they're fast and so if i rush you through your process Mm -hmm. that's no good and if you accidentally assume that i need weeks and weeks to go through something then you can actually keep me like i have made down that. like i have made that mistake that stone like holding, holding me down where I'm in like, that spot nope, i have processed these things do i still have to go through all the emotions absolutely but there can be different pace differences yeah. and accepting that is yeah it's that's part yeah. of it and that, that accepting is a- that my my friend has her process and she needs to go through that and that's at her pace and this um that is that is such an important thing that you just pointed out is without acknowledging the difference in pace yeah i have held you back so many times looking back in small ways and and um and big ways but lots of small ways i have sustained an uncomfortable spot for you that you've already processed out of but i stay there and and have pulled you back and you're not a depressive kind of person. No. That's just the the pace that you're moving at is different. I want to honor the the experience you're having. And it takes me longer to do it than you. So I'm still working on it while you're, yep, I'm, I'm over here now. Oh. And here's another thing. Multiple, having multiple feelings at once. Yes. So I, I've got i I've, I've gotten i've honed a capacity to really notice that i can feel two seemingly very incompatible mm. emotions at the same time yeah um when i date last night it was amazing that was so much fun i had i had a great time and i have this deep sadness and yeah. heartbreak that is the weirdest feeling yeah, and in this, but in probably this, the most human thing. Well, that's what I was going to say. In this world where that is the, that's the norm. We all walk around with an awareness of, of all kinds of, um, negative and positive feelings of sadness and happiness and frustration and confusion, anger and confusion. You only need uh, you two only need two feelings. Line from the good place. If you haven't watched it, highly recommend. Um, yeah, we. we it's weird only in that you're talking about it and you're acknowledging it because so often we are expected by people around us to simplify ourselves. And <sighs> that's not helpful. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that you haven't asked me to simplify. And you didn't assume that just because I had a nice time out with a, a new person <laughs> last night and and they're great and, and she's really fixed. fun. And yeah, that, that doesn't fix. And it that doesn't... doesn't make this other feeling go away um in part because people aren't replaceable that's right people aren't replaceable that's not how this works yeah. which is the same way it's okay or how we have made it okay that when you go out on a date or i go out on a date yeah i'm not replaceable i don't mm-hmm. feel replaceable to you or you know i don't feel like i have yeah. a replaceable spot in your life mm-hmm. um the complexity of holding all of these seemingly incompatible emotions and saying here we are. <laughs> yeah, you know what? They That's... are compatible. Feeling happy and sad. Those aren't incompatible feelings. I'm not sure where we got the idea that they're supposed to be. They're not. Well, so probably from the idea. So binary thinking mm. isn't the same. Okay, this is, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Polarization and binary thinking aren't the same thing. Oh, yeah. So I work with Jungian psychology a lot. So I talk about oppositional forces, these like polarities, these two forces that energy runs between them. So the idea of polarity is, you know, that everything has this sort of oppositional force, this oppositional, this, this 
But binary thinking, if I'm if I understand binary correctly, binary is on or off, yeah. zero or one. Yeah. It's about choosing one end of the pole or yeah. the other. But polarity and Jungian psychology is actually about the flow of energy between the two, the continuum, the right. that. And so yeah. if if we were to say that happy and sad were polarized, that doesn't mean that they're incompatible. You're yeah, right. They're not mutually they're not exclusive. Binary. Yeah. You don't have to choose one or the other, just like you don't have to choose one or the other genders, like there are even just two. You don't have that's not how that works, but there is this this force of, of energy that I feel between the internal experience of happiness and sadness. Well, it's actually left me very sort of perversely energized this week. Sure. Like, I don't know what I'm feeling, but there's a lot. It's like being on a battery charger. Like mm -hmm. a, there's a lot of humanity going on in here, people. <laughs> yeah. I don't necessarily enjoy it, and but here it is. So in what you have told me about um, Jungian psychology. So you have these two oppositional poles. Yeah. And if you bring them both into your life, then a third thing emerges now from the, the combination, which is like, yeah. yeah, I've got red, I've got yellow. I don't just have red and yellow, and I have orange too. Right. So the transcendent function is what you're naming. Right. And um, I was just talking to a client about that this weekend, about when, when you're able to hold and tolerate the tension of the opposites. The third thing can be born, the thing that cannot exist without that tension. Yeah. Um, a beautiful sunset strikes me. Like, right. Without darkness and light, there can't be this, what the heck is that? <laughs> yeah. the, the sunset, the, um, the, the amazing gloriousness that is very clearly neither dark nor light. Yeah. And isn't about dark or light. It's a sunset. It's a completely different thing. That's right. Yeah. That makes, that has sort it of. It isn't either of them. And it doesn't it's feel not. like intuitively, if you were to look at a picture of a sunset, you wouldn't say, well, that is clearly um, <laughs> the, the opposite of, of dark and light. Right? <laughs> yeah. This but is what happens is. when dark meets light. That's not what it looks like. And yet yeah. there it is. And there it is being, being incredibly complex and beautiful. Right. Just like we are. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, whether you're experiencing heartbreak right now or not i think it's safe to say that we all will at some point and we all have at some point and yeah i'm here for it um some of the work that i do is working with couples who are trying to figure out how to have these next level relationships yeah. really really own their stuff and develop the capacity to relate on a whole other, on a whole other level of it's presence for each other. Presence, complexity. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really lucky to get to do that with you. I'm Me too. So appreciative. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So till next time, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you're enjoying our conversation, we would be so grateful if you would drop a rating and quick review so more people will be able to find us. And if you have questions or suggestions that you of things you'd like us to tackle, please send an email to Jolie at JolieHamilton.com. I'd love to hear them. Project Relationship, the entrepreneur's action plan for passionate, sustainable love, is available on Amazon in Kindle, soft, or hardcover versions. This book is a succinct, practical guide to improving your love life. I wrote Project Relationship to give you a set of quick action tools and conversation guides that can transform a mediocre relationship into a fabulous one. These tools are based not just on what Jolie learned in her studies, but on what we actually do to make our relationship thrive. Until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>